Welcome back friends, this is Sonia here from Growing Crowd and after a long 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 time I am doing a voiceover video and it's always fun to talk when you are doing some artwork. So this is actually one of a very 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 old uh, MDF organizer which I had done I think 7, 8, 6, uh, no, 6 years back I guess. So on the front side I had done this uh, mm, gift wrapping paper. And I did the decoupage on this organizer and I have been using this since long so yeah it's still as these and yes I had to do a makeover this time so what I have decided is that I'm going to use my pattern paper now many a times I've been asked can we use pattern paper for the decoupage yes absolutely you can use it is this if you will have to make sure that you apply uh, your uh, supplies properly that you do your artwork properly and then it is absolutely fine so uh, honestly I am a little bored of this design right now so I've decided to do a makeover on this one so I will start uh, this project with some different way so usually what we do is we prep up our base color like base with the color and then we do the decoupage work but here as we are doing it with our pattern paper I will straightly stick this okay now what I'm using here is my Mod Podge and I'm applying my one generous coat of Mod Podge here okay and I'll make sure that I stick this really 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 well so that I can have my paper for a longer time okay now this is the pattern paper I've, which I have already pre cut so this is really 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 thick as you all can see this is not thin so it's not very uh, thin one and I'm going to have this now I will start from one of the sides like I said I have just cut this paper into half I have not cut this to the up uh, like the perfect size of my base and I will just make sure that I stick this really well I press this really well because sticking of this paper is going to have every every everything right we have to make sure that it sticks well now by the time i'm also going to take up my sand paper and i will be cutting a piece of sand paper now why i will be needing a sand paper because i have to make sure that whatever the excess of papers are here on the sides let me just show you can you see this this is folded because that's the excessive paper okay so we need to trim that so instead of trimming that with your scissors or your cutter use your sandpaper and this will come out can you see this yeah so we are going to repeat the process on all the four sides So this is done. I am done with my trimming work. Now I just need to paint the surface again. So I'll just clean this with the cloth because uh, when you scrap your papers, it just leaves some dust which we need to remove before starting our work. Okay, so here I'm almost done. Now I was confused between uh, like too many shades. So I have picked up the same green color. I love, love, love this shade. So I thought I'll use this only. And now I'm just cleaning up my big flat brush and I'll start applying this chalk paint on my base. Okay, now we are going to do a lot of work on this so you don't have to be um, worried about uh, which side color, dark color, lighter color you want. You just have to make sure that you apply your color well and of course when I did my first uh, 
work around like five six years back it was sealed really well which you can see till now that it is absolutely absolutely fine okay so yes on working on the top of it is a little easier and I have done this earlier it's not that I'm doing this for the first time so yes it works out pretty well now I need to color it on the sides too This is fun. So if you have any of your old organizers or any of your stuff which uh, you have like got bored of or you want to give a new makeover like every I know every five six years we want to give a makeover of our place then of course these things also deserve a little makeover from us and can you imagine like earlier it was this and now it's looking this fab. So here I'm just adding my chopping now if uh, here i have gone for all the green colors if you want you can use a contrast color and i am sure you are going to like that also it depends on which color and theme you are going to use this for so if you are new to my channel do check my channel for all the amazing videos on diy's and yes we are not only into diy's the typical typical diy's but we also share a lot of work on uh, using the various supplies in different ways and I'm sure, I am sure you all are going to love that and do check that because it's not only the DIYs which works, you also need to have a good supply like every time using the cheap supplies does not work at all. So yes, if the brands are working on highlighting their supplies on getting something good for us there is a reason that why they are working hard why they tell us that it is good for them or for us why because it has some other other purpose to it so yes it's not that i'm promoting any particular brand but it's just i'm sharing my experiences because many people come and tell me oh why you don't why don't you do the uh, those uh, diys with the things what we have at home but do they really last like just tell me if i am doing a diy with the old plastic bottle i'm not at all saying that this is wrong what i'm saying is is it going to last that long are you going to keep it for that longer time if yes if that works out for you it's very very good but this is my personal opinion that those things don't last very long and that's the reason when i'm working i love to spend more of my time on doing something which is useful and which can be used for a longer time like i always say this is my thought process this is the way how i uh, love doing it so yeah if you have a different choice it's absolutely absolutely fine okay now this is done this is done 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 now i need to use my heat gun to dry this up if you don't have a heat gun what you can do is you can try out with your hair dryer only for the drying process but it makes a lot of noise so yeah just keep that in mind or you can even let it dry naturally okay now we are done with the chalk paint and i thought of doing some uh, vintage kind of coloring on this and for that i wanted to use something which is um uh, let me dry this up also i think i forgot the sign of my panel and yes before moving on to the next step we have to make sure that all the sides have dried out completely okay now once I'm done with the trying part, so I have, to, like I mentioned, I have to do the uh, some of the coloring work and for that I did not want to use any other shade. So I'm going to use my ink pad. Yeah, this is a dye based ink pad and with this I'm just going to make a nice crisp edge to it. So let me just show you. Can you see this? Okay. Now whenever you are using your dye based ink pads, what happens is that um, they are going to smudge for sure okay 
so whenever you are using your dye based ink pads you will have to be assured like keep that in mind that it is going to smudge whenever you use water to it or any other liquid to it because they are not permanent inks so why i'm doing this i will tell you in a while Do it on all the sides. I'll try to make sure that I give a nice border on all the edges. Okay. Now this is done. A little more on this side. Another side. Okay. So now when this is done, then what I'm going to do is I'll just pick up another brush. Let me take up another acrylic block too. Now here in this block, I'm just going to dab my ink pad. Okay. I'll just dab very nicely my ink pad so that I get the color on my block. Can you see the color? Okay, so this was the part where I had done this. Now I'm going to just spray my water here. When you apply your water, of course, it is going to smudge. And now we will just do this on our base. So you will see a drastic uh, color change. I'm not sure if that is visible on the camera right now. So yeah, I will just do this very nicely, very roughly. Can you see the color difference here and here? some more inks here and I will just do this on my complete panel this is actually not giving a very drastic change and I'm sure that is not visible on camera it's just going to settle down my paper to a subtle color okay and you can see I'm absolutely fine with these lines it's already there so it's okay I'll just dab my ink pad directly on my base. I'll dip my brush in the water and I will start brushing it up. So you will see the color starts bleeding. Okay. The more water you add, the more your color starts bleeding. So this is how we are going to give it a nice rustic look without any darker shade. Paint especially. I'll just dab this dip my brush in the water and I'm going to run this okay I just have this very very quickly now as they are dye based in pads they dye quickly but like I said if you run your uh, water brushes on this it is going to smudge can you see that how lighter this has become and this gives such a natural effect you don't need any stencil uh, you don't need a uh, any uh, blending tool or anything with just your ink pads you can create such beautiful background and this looks so natural and so 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 beautiful you have to be a little quick when you are doing this one so that it fades out well and it works out well and you can see this yes you have to make sure that you do not overdo the brushing part otherwise it is just going to take out the colors I'll just try to try this quickly. Can you see how beautiful this background has come? So we did the chalk paint work and then on the top of it I have just done my ink pad and I've used dye based ink pad, not the permanent ink pad. So that you can see that how beautifully we can blend in the colors and create a beautiful background actually. Now we'll do it on the other side. The same process, just dab your ink pads, take up your brush, dip it in the water and run it on your ink pad for portions and you will see that it fades down very easily and then very quickly you can dry this up with your heat gun.
okay now this is done my front page has also dried out completely now i have already taken up uh, the transfer me sheets from dress my craft and i absolutely love this one i have decided i'm going to use this on my front panel so let me just remove the plastic film from the top i have not done the particular very very fussy cutting work why because um, this does not need any so fussy cutting work so yeah and now i'll just stick up a bowl i'll dip this in water for 10 to 12 seconds one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay now here i have just taken up my image now I know like I had already seen my image and I was sure that how I wanted this to be. Okay, so I am just going to stick this. Now for sticking this, I'll use my sponge topper. I will just dab it nicely on my base. You don't need anything. You don't uh, need any, any, any other medium. You just need to take up your transfer me sheets, dab it in uh, Soak it in water for 10 to 12 seconds maximum and then you can easily just press it with your sponge stopper or even with a piece of sponge it's absolutely fine. Okay and once you are happy with it, once you know that your image is sliding down, you can take it out. Okay and now here I can my image and this looks gorgeous let me just peel it up oh wow this looks absolutely absolutely beautiful and gorgeous beautiful now what i've done is i've already taken out one of the a uh, sentiment i just i did not do the fussy cutting work here i just take out the excess because this actually has too much of excessive uh, portions on this Okay, now once I'm done with this, I'll remove the film, I'll dip it in water, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah, I'll take up, like take out all the excessive water from here, and now 